Hello, today we are looking at a new type of graph called the exponential function. Now, exponential graphs will have equations in the form y equals a to the power of x. Now, a will be a number, but what you'll notice is that the x is the power. Exponential graphs have one horizontal asymptote. An asymptote, that's a new word. An asymptote is a line that a curve approaches by getting closer and closer to it, but never reaches or touches it. And I will show you what that means when we can actually see it on a graph in a minute. So we are going to use a table to explore what exponential graphs look like. So we have three different equations here. The first one is y equals 2 to the power of x. So we're going to use our calculator. 2 is what we call the base number. So I want 2 to the power of, and the first x value I want to use is minus 3. Okay, and press equals. And it gives me a little decimal of 0 0.125. Okay, then going on to the next one, I want to do power of minus 2. So just delete, don't have to delete the whole thing. Just change the minus 3 to a minus 2, which is a quarter or 0 0.25. Now, I don't want to type them all into the calculator. The next one comes out to be minus a half. Oh, not minus a half, sorry. When I sub in minus one, I get a half. Two to the power of zero is equal to one. Two to the power of one is two. Two to the power of two is four. And two to the power of three is eight. Okay, we'll draw that on our graph down here. So along the x-axis, I'm actually going to go up every second space, just try and spread this out a little bit. So I'm going to have 1, 2, and 3 going that way, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3, but vertically going to go up by 1s. Okay, so for the first graph, I had when x equals minus 3, y is 0 0.125. Very, very small way down here. Minus 2, it's at a quarter, which is not much bigger. At minus 1, we're at a half. And 0, we get to 1. Once we get into the positive numbers, it starts getting big quite quickly. When x equals 1, y equals 2. When x equals 2, y equals 4. And x equals 3, y equals 8. Okay, so it starts off really small and gradually, gradually increases. And then starts increasing really, really fast. And that is the basic shape of an exponential. As you keep getting larger and larger values for x, that curve will increase really, really fast, um, get very, very steep. However, for these negative values, it will keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but will never actually get to zero. And that is what we call an asymptote. So to draw or to label an asymptote on your graph, you draw a line. So I'm drawing it in red so that hopefully you can see it over the, the axis line that is marked there. You draw a line to, at, to where the graph is approaching. So my graph is approaching zero. And so I'm drawing a dotted line at y is equal to zero. 
If you draw an asymptote on a graph, or if you're asked to draw an asymptote on a graph, you should write the equation on there. So that equation is y equals 0 for the asymptote, because it's going through the y-axis at 0. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. So it's 3 this time to the power of x. So 3 is now the base. We want that to the power of minus 3. And that is very small, 0 0.04. I'm going to round that to. Then to the power of minus 2 is 0 0.1 to the power of negative 1. 0 0.3 to the power of 0. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. 3 to the power of 1 is 3. 3 to the power of 2 is 9. And 3 to the power of 3 is 27. So let's draw that one now. Using a different color. So this one was my y is equal to 2 to the x. So I'm going to use purple to draw my next one. So when x equals minus 3, y equals 0 0.4, which is even smaller than the green graph. At minus 2, it's 0 0.1, still smaller than the green graph. At minus 1, it's 0.3 still smaller than the green graph. At zero, it's equal to one, which is going through the exact same point as the green graph. At one, it's at three, so it's now steeper. Two is at nine. And three is at 27, which is too big for my graph that I've got here. So it starts off even smaller then the green graph, it comes through the same point, the one, and then it gets steeper even faster. And that is y is equal to 3 to the power of x. It has the same horizontal asymptote. It is getting smaller and smaller and smaller down here for those negative values for x, but will never hit 0. And then there's one more graph here for us to draw, which is 4 to the power of x. So 4 to the power of negative 3 is 0 0.02. Then three, 4 to the power of negative 2, 0 0.06. 4 to the power of negative 1, is 0 0.25, 4 to the power of 0 is 1, 4 to the power of 1 is 4, 4 to the power of 2 is 16, and 4 to the power of 4 is 64. So let's draw that in another color again. Let's go with a yellowy color. So at minus 3, it is even smaller than both the graphs that we had. At minus 2, it's smaller. At minus 1.25. At 1, it is going through the 1 again. Uh, sorry, at 0, it's going through the 1 again. When x is 1, the value is, the y value is 4. When x is 2, y is 16. And y is, x is 3, y is off the chart. We can't put 64 on our graph. So it's even smaller to start with than the other two graphs. Be careful, I'm deleting that because that was a bit messy. I can't have my graph going over that, um, that asymptote. Goes through the one and takes off in a big, big, big hurry. And that's y equals 4 to the power of x. Okay, so you can see that the larger that base number is, the steeper it, the, the, the more quickly it gets super, super steep. 
the asymptote for all three of those graphs is at y is equal to zero. Okay, and the other important feature of the exponential is that for the when they're in this form, they always go through the point zero one. It is possible, however, to move that. And that happens here in our next question. So we have now, we're now going to put some minus signs in there. So the first graph is the same as the first one we did last time. Y is equal to the power of X. This is just so that we can compare what's going to happen when we move the minus signs around. So I'm just going to copy those values down again. This one was 0 0.125. This one was 0 0.25. This one was 0 0.5. 1, 2, 4, and 8. Okay, so we've got our Cartesian plane down here. So again, I'm going to go up by every second space is going to go up by 1 on the horizontal axis, on the x axis but vertically I'm one going to go up by ones, but I might only number every second one to save some time. Okay, so quickly drawing the y equals two to the x um, exponential. We have when x equals minus 3, we have 0 0.125. At minus 2, we're at 0.25. At minus 1, we're at a half. At, one, at 0, we're at 1. At 1, we're at 2. At 2, we're at 4. And 3, we are at 8. Okay, so just like in example 1, there is our basic exponential shape, y is equal to 2 to the power of x. But if we put a minus sign in front of that 2 to the power of x, what is that going to do to the graph? Well, let's type the first one in. We have minus 2 to the power of minus 3. Okay, so it's the same decimal, but now it's negative. So negative 0 0.125. And it's going to be like that for all of them. So when I put negative 2 there, it's going to be negative 0 0.25. So it's all the same values as my first graph, but they have all now become negative. So what that means is that my exponential has been flipped over the x-axis or in other words, is reflected over the x-axis and is now down here. So it's going through minus 1, minus 2, minus 4, and minus 8. So it has the same shape, but reflected downwards. Okay, so that is when we have a minus sign in front of the base number. But we could also put a minus sign in front of the power of x. What is that going to do? Let's have a look. If two is still my base number, and then I have a minus, oops, sorry, power, then I have a minus in the power from the formula but then I want to sub in minus three. That means I'm now going to get a positive eight here. Okay, the next one, when I put minus two in, is going to be a four. And perhaps what you can see, what you will notice, is that eight, four, it's these numbers here, we're reversing the order. So the next one's going to be a 2, then a 1, then a 0 0.5, then a 0 0.25, and a 0 0.125. So putting a minus sign in the power flips the graph over the y-axis, which looks like, so at minus 3, 
we're at eight. At minus two, we're at four. At minus one, we're at two, zero, one, one, a half, two, a quarter, and three, one eighth. So it looks like this. Oops, might be easier if I go down. Okay, for all of those graphs, there is a horizontal asymptote going through the y equals zero. So cross here. So there is my asymptote. So we can actually put H A, which stands for horizontal asymptote, at y equals zero. Because when we do um, our hyperbola graphs coming up, we might get, we will get some vertical asymptotes as well. Okay, we still have some more over here. Question three. Find the point of intersection of the graph of y equals three to the x and y equals nine. So the point of intersection means that we need to solve these simultaneously. So this is going to be equation one and this one's going to be equation two. And because in the second equation y is, well actually in both of them y is by itself, we can sub equation two into equation one. So taking y is equal to nine and putting that there in that equation. So that is nine equals three to the power of x. Now these are what we call exponential equations, which we did solve when we were doing our equations topic this year. To solve them, we want to write both the left-hand side and the right-hand side with the same base. Now at the moment, my exponential has a base of three. So I can write nine with a base of three, three squared is equal to nine, isn't it? So once the bases are the same, so they both have a base of three, that means the powers will be equal. So x is equal to two, and that has been solved for x. We still need to find the y value. Now we sub our x value back into one of the equations to find the y value. It's actually very easy if you look at equation number two because y is always equal to nine no matter what the x value is. So that means that the point of intersection is the point two comma nine. All right, so that is our lesson on exponential functions.